Okay, hi there. Welcome to a series of four videos looking at the economics of price discrimination. So first of all, what do we mean by price discrimination? Well, it's a very common pricing strategy for firms, and it happens when a business charges a different price to different groups of consumers for what is essentially an identical product, an identical good or service. And the reasons for charging a different price are not linked with the cost of supply. So it must be some other factor, including income levels and uh, the coefficient of price elasticity of demand. Lots of good examples around. This is a very common strategy for businesses. Back in the summer of 2021, BT announced plans to offer um, super fast fibre broadband at less than half price to any household in the UK receiving universal credit. Households on lower incomes, uh, there's an interesting pricing strategy to offer cheaper broadband to those households. Uh, in the spring of uh, 2021, Boohoo was uh, found to be selling the same coat, the same items of clothing for higher prices or different prices across a range of fashion labels. Now, there's nothing very surprising about this because price discrimination is so common amongst many businesses. Indeed, it occurs in all imperfectly competitive markets. So it doesn't happen in perfect competition, but it will happen in monopoly, duopoly and oligopoly, in part because this strategy requires a supplier to have some pricing power, some autonomy, some freedom over the prices they charge. Whereas, of course, in perfect competition, each firm is a price taker. And essentially, it involves selling the same product at different prices to different groups of consumers. You're segmenting the market and it's a strategy which is uh, often features on exam papers in part because it has potentially significant welfare and distribution effects. So the really good answers will consider the impact of price discrimination, the arguments for and against uh, through the changes in consumer and producer surplus or changes in, if you like, social or community welfare. Now, just briefly, what are the main aims, the objectives of price discrimination? Well, uh, there are lots of them. Let me just pick out three for you. The first is to generate more revenue. So many businesses use this pricing tactic as a way of increasing their top line by extracting consumer surplus and turning it, converting it, if you like, into increased producer surplus for the seller. So revenue is a, is a key aim of this. And linked with that is profit, the bottom line. And th the key point here is that you can make higher profits using this strategy, providing the, the marginal profit is positive. So marginal profit is where it's the profit on the next unit you sell or the profit from the next uh, transaction with another, another customer. So it may be the case that you're offering some cheap discounted travel tickets to some students, for example, that would be price discrimination. You can still make a profit on those groups, providing the revenue you're getting is greater than the marginal cost of selling to that group. And we call that marginal profit. So revenue and profit are the two key objectives. There are other aims, of course, partly. It's because businesses often have spare capacity. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday lunchtimes, it could be that the restaurant is pretty empty. Ordinarily, it's quieter at lunchtimes, but you, I mean, you could close if you wanted to, but sometimes restaurants don't want to do that, so they offer those early bird deals or those lunchtime menu deals, uh, often in, in, in uh, competition with the supermarkets, to use up spare capacity. And if you can do that, that can help a business make more efficient use of their supply capacity. Now, there are three main types of price discrimination that most students for most exam boards need to cover. Let's just quickly go through these. Uh, the first is first degree discrimination. And that it basically involves a negotiation or a haggling process between buyer and seller. And the seller's aim is to charge each individual consumer the maximum price that they're willing and able to pay. So the aim really picture here is of a tourist bazaar. A haggling process is where the seller is trying to tease out of the consumer what they're willing and able to pay. And of course, that will vary from person to person. 
second degree price discrimination is where you're charging different prices again, but this time it might be linked to the quantity purchased, or it could be the time at which a purchase is made, peak versus off-peak, or it could be that you have to accumulate coupons or loyalty payments or something before you can, uh, you can engineer a, a meaningful price discount. So here's a good example of a grocery store where if you buy four or more, the price is 250 but if you buy less than four, you pay three pounds, you pay three twenty nine each. Bit of cheddar, cheesy example, if you like. But okay, a lot of supermarkets, of course, offer essentially price discounts if you're willing and able to buy in quantity in bulk. So if you go to a wholesaler, for example, you're going to get a much better price than if you go to a retailer, essentially for the same product. Third degree is perhaps the most common type of price discrimination. And this is where you're charging varying prices to different groups of people with a different coefficient of price elasticity of demand. So the key here is to work out which groups have a fairly inelastic demand, which groups have a more price sensitive demand curve, and you can target and tailor prices accordingly. Now in the second of our four videos, We'll spend a little bit more time focusing on first degree price discrimination. Okay, thank you.